All right, so today we're going to be talking about a web-based browser uh, editor. So this means that you do not have to download anything. You literally log in and you are going to be able to edit online. So the benefits of this is you can do this on anything that has a Chrome browser. So that means Chromebooks and you could do this on, uh, I believe on iPads. I have not quite tested that yet, but I have been testing it ex exclusively or extensively on my uh, laptop and it's been very effective. And so the program is called Pixlr and today this video is going to consist showing you how to log in showing you a little bit about how to use it and then kind of comparing it back and forth to Photoshop. So first of all, to log in, all you have to do is go to this uh, the website and go to the little yellow login button on the side. And then once you are there, you are going to log in with your um, don't use, if you're on a school web website or using a school email, make sure that you use a personal email because school emails uh, don't allow you to get codes or outside emails from the outside world. It's only within district. So make sure that if you are doing this to ensure that you actually can log in because it's going to email you a code that you're using either a parent's email or a guardian's email or your own personal email. And so make sure that you use Use your own personal email to do this. So you want to go to sign up here and you're going to state what country and you're going to choose your password right away. They're going to then email you the code. You're going to type in the code to confirm that you're not a robot and then you're going to log in one more time and then you're in. So I've already set up one and so I'm going to just uh, do this real quick. Okay, so it's going to ask you for a uh, license service agreement. Uh, this is a, I'm glad this popped up for me so I can definitely say you want to say agree, but if you don't want to get updates or anything from them, you want to say, uh, you want to uncheck that. So um, I believe I did. Once you have logged in, the next thing you're going to want to do is I'm going to go to the Pixlr X. So this is the express one. This is the completely free one. Um, I know for sure. And so we're going to go to open image. Now, the one drawback I found with this is you do have to use um, JPEGs. I do not know about RAW. I do know that um, I've been using a Sony and they use um, ARWs. Yeah. And they do AWRs. Anyway, they don't use like the typical RAW and they will not accept it. So if you're a beginner photographer, working in RAW will be no problem. But if you are um, more experienced, you might have to switch to JPEGs to be able to use this program. But if you're using your phone, it shouldn't be any issue. So I'm going to choose the pre-size image. I'm going to make sure that it's as high quality as possible because when I export, it's going to it's already coming in as a JPEG. I don't want the quality yet to get any lower. All right, so then as you can see up here, these are kind of your little quick options. And you can see over here you have layers, which is really nice. Um, I'm going to open up Photoshop now so you can see the difference. So this is what you look at when you've got a Photoshop. Here's your layers over here. So as you can see, there's obviously more that you're working with, but um, it's still like a nice starter Okay, so let's say you would like to um, add like a filter. You can actually, there's these filters in these little guys over here. And so you've got a few different options that you could kind of play with and you can kind of change it. And I think that'll show you up on the screen here. And then you can press apply or cancel or whatever you want to that to actually apply it. We'll apply this just to see. So there it kind of, it changed a little bit. So you've got the automatic filters, but the big thing about this isn't the filters. Like the big thing about this is going to be the actual like light editing options that you can do, bringing out the colors and the um, bringing out like the more um, subtle things in your imagery. So we're going to focus on that. So if you go over to this little button, it says filter. The one that I was on before was actually effects. Um, but so the effects are this like half moon. This what looks like a Ritz cracker. Anyway, uh, if you go into here, this is actually where you can play with your um, editing a little bit. So, for example, you can bring up the sharpening. You can make it really sharp. Remember, you don't want to over sharpen your stuff. You can bring up the clarity. You can smooth and blur it. So these are just some things that will 
affect the actual like texture of the image where if you go over to here to the sunshine one this is adjustments. So when you're in here, this is where you can do your light editing, um, where in Photoshop, it is located um, over in the top into image adjustments. And you can find your options over here for these or your adjustments are also present in layers. And so those are two different places that they are. So this is where you would be doing your light adjustments. So um, that's how you kind of do those. The other really cool thing is your opportunity for collage. So if you go through here, you can use these to sh shape cut out. It still has the magic tool. It's got the lasso tool. You can bring in the shapes and it's got all the selections in each of them. And that's one thing that actually kind of is nice. I wish Photoshop did a little bit more. In order to use those selections in Photoshop, you have to hold down the mouse and you'll be able to see all your options that you can do on each of those toggles. But here, as soon as you actually select it, you automatically get all the options there. So it is a little bit more user friendly and still offering a very comparable um, opportunity that Photoshop does. So um, that's just kind of a little walkthrough on how to kind of use it and where all the stuff is. So this is your cutouts. Uh, this is your crop. Remember, crop is very important. Don't underestimate the power of a good crop. Sometimes if you have things too far away, really cropping it down and bringing your edges in can really focus your attention. So don't be afraid to use that. Um, you also got the liquify. So you can still make your memes, people. Anyway. Um, you've got your retouches. So if you want to get rid of some blemishes, they're a little bit more obvious. Uh, it's a little bit more obvious in Photoshop. It looks like a Band-Aid. Um, I'll go back to it over here. So as you can see right here, this is actually your blemish removal. It's the spot healing tool and the spot healing brush. Those are what you would use to do that. Um, and then you've got, of course, your drawing. So if you were going to go in and like draw over it, you could use this uh, text is located right here um, and then you can add elements so this is kind of interesting so in photoshop if you wanted to add overlays if you wanted to add bokeh you actually have to go in and find an image and overlay it that way in this particular case you can actually just bring in your uh, bokeh here so if i click on this i can just select one of these and just it'll automatically apply it and i can then bring down the transparency which is actually really neat like i was very um, surprised that this was available and it's kind of a fun tool especially if you just need to add a little bit of pizzazz to your image um, as long as you, of course you're not overdoing it. Subtlety is an art form. Uh, so yeah and then you can go in and you can also add images. You can browse your own, you can bring in a link or you can use stock footage of stock stuff to add images to it. So you can actually start collaging and adding layers on top of it. So that is pretty much Pixlr in a nutshell as far as using. Now, once you're done though, um, let's say I wanted to save this beautiful picture. I go to save down at the bottom here and you want to make sure that you give it a name and then you want to choose, I always say JPEG for my assignments. Um, some people want to see it in PNGs. Some people want to see it in better quality pictures, but JPEG for turning in on the Google Classroom is the most readable. And it also kind of protects you. Remember, because JPEGs lose their quality every time they're shared. And so I can't just take your image as my own because it'll like slowly lose quality as it's shared and saved multiple times. So, um, long story short, choose JPEG, name it, make sure your quality is as high as possible, like in the high department right over here, or 90% or above. This is your image width. It doesn't matter how, how big it is right now. Like unless we were printing, that's the only time we really want to worry about how big it is right now. We're just going to be turning things in. And so just give me the highest you can possibly get the resolution. And then you click download. I didn't name that. I'm, I disobeyed my own rule. And then uh, you can then save it to either a file. Um, you can click on it and save it to the Google Classroom right away. You can save it into um, uh, Google Drive. Any way that you can find a way to save it, save it so that you don't lose it. And then make sure that you, of course, um, find its final location. Uh, so yeah. That is how you kind of start and use uh, the new Pixlr. Uh, this particular one is completely free. And so this is a nice way that we can uh, use um, 
an editing software on just a browser. So that is all. And I hope that you guys found this helpful. All right. Have a great day.